How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I feel like I've done this a few times already, and I'm still working out the lighting and all of that fun stuff. <laughs> How was your day at the swamp? It was good. It was extra swampy today. It was just, it is so, like, oh, there's so much condensation everywhere. It's insane. <laughs> it's like raining on the inside. Yeah, so. seriously. <laughs> I, it was also in the corners, there was, um, like, a pool of water. Because I guess it melted over there. And I did, like, a Lutz on the corner. And I just got drenched head to toe. Oh, oh no. Julia. Oh, my God. She is amazing. She's the sweetest. <laughs> All right. So looks like everyone is joining us. So it's pretty exciting. Um, so, you know, when uh, I was doing research for the questions to ask you, of course, I went to Wikipedia, so anyone can get all the information there. But it's a different thing to hear you tell it and, and hear your memories. So thank you for doing this with us. Um, <laughs> I am. Oh, my gosh. I'm seeing a bunch of people I know. It's awesome. Donovan <laughs> is here. Okay. Sorry. I'll stay focused. No, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. No, it is, it is fun. And it's hard to, like, look at you and look down there. So what was your first introduction to figure skating and how old were you? So I was four years old and basically I got invited um, by a, a school friend to a birthday party that was at an ice rink. And my dad took me, my dad is a big skier and he took me and I just loved it. And I wasn't very good at other sports. My parents put me in everything um, because I'm Brazilian. They put me in soccer and I just, I scored a goal, uh, a goal into my, my own team's goal. And they were just like, all right, this isn't it for you. And so I just stuck with skating. I went from group lessons to private lessons. How long did you stay in group lessons? Like, when did you make that switch? Um, I want to say, I, so I got all my Snowplow Sam badges. So I want to say like at least for a year. And then we switched to private lessons. Okay, and this was for for those that don't know. I'm I'm and including myself. I'm assuming that this is in Virginia, or this is in Georgia, actually. I so I was born there, and then we, me and my mom, we lived in Brazil for like two years, and then we moved back to um, Georgia, and then we moved to Virginia. Okay, so the the cooler in Alpharetta, Georgia. Yeah, actually, <laughs> yeah, that's where I used to skate. Okay. <laughs> There's a big community there that they do like a lot of ice dance socials and stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and you represent Brazil. I know I'm going off track a little bit myself, but you represent Brazil because of your family, right? Even though you were born in America, you lived in Brazil mm -hmm. for two years and then you yeah. came back and mm -hmm. you were able to get dual citizenship. So actually, my mom had me and my sister naturalized when we were like born, like right when we were a baby, my mom got us naturalized because she's a Brazilian, like she was born in Brazil. And it's kind of like here, if you have a parent born in Brazil, you can get citizenship for your kid. Yeah, I am an Italian citizen as well. So I get that. So was there a specific moment or competition where you realized like this was something you wanted to pursue seriously? Like you switch to privates and then what happened? So basically, um, once I started to get my more advanced jumps, it, it, me and my mom had always talked about me representing Brazil since I was a kid because they'd never had like a figure skater at the Olympic Games before. And so as soon as I started to get some of my more serious jumps, then um, we talked to my coach and we reached out to the Brazilian Federation and they reviewed kind of the videos that we sent them and they decided to send me to my first competition was it uh, junior world in 2010. So it was a long time ago. Wow. And then, but you did um, more local competitions before that mm -hmm. and then, and went through the whole USFSA testing system or. Yeah. So or I, did, I did go through the testing system. I, I went all the way through senior in my freestyle and then on junior, 
um, for the moves in the field. Okay. And then, um, sorry, and then you're resilience here. Go like, for it. Go, <laughs> go for it. Estou falando em inglês. Eu vou fazer um live em português muito certo. So, I just want to say I'm going to do, I'll do a live in Portuguese at some point. <laughs> I mean, you. For me, it's fine if you do bilingual. I, I Portuguese, I, Italian, French, and just Latin based. Is all kind of similar. <laughs> yeah, it would be fun. I, just, just I can't ask you in Portuguese because that would not be good. <laughs> so, in the 2013-2014 season, you earned a spot at the 2014 Sochi Olympics, making you the first lady skater to ever represent Brazil. So did you, when you were doing that competition, when you, you qualified, did you know that, that, that you had made history at that moment? Um, yeah, it was a, so the Brazilian community, they are just incredibly supportive. And I just knew it was so big for not only Brazil, but, um, just for all of Central and South America, because I feel like one of the most underrepresented um, demographics in figure skating is the Latin community. And I thought it was so good to like get them on the world map and to maybe inspire more kids coming out of Brazil and the rest of South and Central America to get into skating. So did that, did that add pressure to you and your training? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> It did. It did add a lot of pressure, but um, I knew one way or another it was going to be. Just even going to the qualifiers was a big was a big deal for Brazil. And and if you want to repeat what you said in Portuguese, like at any time, go for it. <laughs> I'll do like a summary at the end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so and did your training change? Like so, you had your coach in. At this point, it was. Where were you in, for your Olympic I in, training? I was in Virginia. I was with Andre Krukov at the time. And um, yeah, so unfortunately, like after I qualified for um, the Olympics in 2013, I fractured my tibia. So that took some time off of training. And I don't, I was not, just being totally frank, I was not nearly as prepared as I should have been going into Sochi. But um, I learned lessons going forward, and I think that helped my future competitions and the next Olympics, too. Yeah, and then I assume that you were very – it was it was an entire experience going to your first Olympics, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought I was um, so, so grown. At, I, was, I turned 18 at the Games, actually, and looking back, I was just – I was so – it was also new to me. It was a brand new experience. Wow. And then you earned the first gold medal for a Brazilian skater in an international competition in 2017. So that, that was also a big moment for, for Brazil and representing as a ladies figure skater. Um, and, then, and then you qualified for a return to the Olympic stage in 2018 and made history again because you're the 2018 olympics is very different right like you get if you want to <laughs> jump in there and talk about that that short program i actually dragged my husband to the <laughs> bar and it was like a total dive bar i think they had like hockey going on or something and i said guys you need to put on figure skating and they turned all the tvs onto you and your short program <laughs> So what was oh that? And God, it was it was a so gorgeous sweet. skate. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh yeah, no, no problem. I thought it was fun. like everybody was into it too. I'm like, yeah, she trains on my ring. <laughs> oh, Thank you. Oh, that's so sweet of you. Uh, and how was that short program for you? You were like, this is my second time here. And and how did you how did you how did you do? Well, that was, um, since Soji didn't go very well, I felt like I had a lot to prove to myself for South Korea. And um, so I just, I really, I trained so hard before Korea. And 
I think I was just more mature um, and I knew what to expect because I'd been through it once before. And I really just tried to shut everything out and just, you know, tried to be in my own world and just pretend like it was practice. And you also, you had a, a coaching change too. You moved mm -hmm. as well. So, and um, so now you're preparing for the next competitive season and with a possible third trip to the Olympics. So, and I'm sure your training has been very different this time too, um, between the pandemic and not having accessibility to rinks. So how did you keep up with your training when the rinks were shut down? Um, so basically, so through Krigor, which is, um, you know, Kristen and Igor's company and who Rosalia is helping run. Um, it was, I was doing a lot of classes through um, Krigor Studio, like the online classes, and I recommend them to everybody. They're amazing. And um, I was just, you know, I, to be honest, I wasn't on, I didn't even know what the future of my career was going to be in 2020. So I really wasn't skating very much. I thought that was the end. I thought I was going to finish that year because it just, everything seemed so uncertain. Um, but I was really, I was going to the gym, I was lifting weights and I was doing the classes online. And that's how I kind of, I mean, maintained some physical shape during 2021, which is really hard. And I just, I want to say hi to my Nachi, my primos. I want to say hi to my cousins, they're in the chat from Brazil. Um, but yeah, it was uh, very difficult. And I imagine a lot of, you know, a lot of athletes really struggle during that time because, you know, unfortunately skating isn't something you can do at home. You know, you have to go to a facility. And at the time, we were very uncertain as to how, like, how Corona was going to affect us. So a lot of people didn't go. Right. And you even, you taught some classes for Krieger Studio as well. Mm -hmm. Which and is fun. They were, yeah, fun and hard workouts. I tried it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, too, I think you, you did some inline, like, I think I saw you rollerblading around or something. Where, what was that like, switching to wheels? Or have you done <laughs> wheels before? I, so I don't, I don't have a pair of, like, rollerblades that are meant for, like, um, you know, like Pachina, Pachina Sanji does, which is like skating on the street. Like, I, I kind of have these janky roller skates I got at like some, uh, like Dick Sporting Goods in Colorado one year. But I just was just for fun, just to try to like wake up those muscles. I was trying to rollerblade a little bit just to use those same, you know, stroking muscles, you know? Yeah. It's 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 hard. I did get like the Snow White. My old coach had Snow White frames, and I tried putting those on my my skating boots. But unless you have the right surface, it can be difficult and oh challenging. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I've tried skating in New York on those, and I almost ate pavement a few times. I almost fell on my face because <laughs> it's like. And you were this, skateboarding too. Yeah. yeah, and you were skateboarding, I was skateboarding longboarding. With my sister. Yeah, I was just trying to look, you know, we had so much time. I was trying a little bit of everything. But always, always gliding, gliding forward. <laughs> so your car yeah. coaching. Oh, and Kailani's here too? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kailani did a class. That, that was the class that I tried, the one that the two of you did together. There were yeah, a lot that of was, uh, That was super fun. She's like one of my closest friends. So like we were able to do that together and that was really fun. So your current coaching team, Kristen and Igor, Krieger Studio. Um, I know you you were working with a Russian coach before. Um, you know, now Kristen is, is kind of is in the mix and not technically a Russian coach. But do you see any difference between their approaches and coaching? Because you work in, do you do you work with Kristen and Igor? I'm assuming that you do. Yeah. Um, I work I work a lot with both and I think um, you know it's good to have two different perspectives because I do think there's a difference between um, American training versus Russian training and oh, someone just said Kristen's basically Russian yeah I think she's been around them for so long that she's adapted a lot of their you know philosophies um, so I think 
I think, yeah, having a good mix between, I think it's good to work with a lot of coaches anyway, just so you can get a different eye. So like if you're not able to do something successfully, someone else can come in and give you a fresh perspective. And um, I'm working with also a Roman at the rink with jump for jumps right now. And he's been great. Yeah, Roman Saroff is, he's also one of those more traditional Russian coaches where it's just go, go, go. Yeah, for sure. But sometimes Not you need fair. that. And sometimes okay. I'm like that with my friends, like my non-skating friends, and I like give them like really harsh, and they're like, oh my gosh, like you're around Russians too much. <laughs> they're like, chill <laughs> out a little bit. <laughs> I teach piano. I think everyone tells me I'm too nice. So it must not be the Russian style. <laughs> um, I know that you have done some coaching as well while you're training. Mm -hmm. How do you think your experiences with all styles of coaching influence the way you coach? Um, I definitely think, you know, working with Kristen and Igor and like my coaches in the past, I've taken little bits and pieces that I enjoyed from working with each of them into my own training style. And I like to push my students to the best that I like, I know that they can do and without making, trying to make them feel, um, you know, trying to like keep them confident, but still pushing them beyond where they think they can go. That's, I'll be handing over my daughter to you shortly. <laughs> I would love to. What? They're so sweet. <laughs> What has been the most inspirational moment that you have experienced as either a figure skating student or as a, in competition? I definitely think um, not even the Olympics themselves. I think it's the qualifying process. I think, you know, I always say to everyone, you know, the Olympics are a lot easier than the qualifiers. And I still think that's true. I, you know, I think that, um, I think my proudest moment was, you know, putting the work in before 2017 and watching it come true, like watching my dream come true right in front of me. I thought, I genuinely thought like I wasn't even a contender for 2018 and, you know, it all happened and I was really proud. I was really proud of the work that Kristen and Igor put in. I was proud of the work that I put in and, you know, my family support. It just kind of all came together in that moment. It was so special. And what has been, have you, well, have you had a chance to experience an inspirational moment as a coach? As a coach? Uh, definitely. I think um, I had a really great student. She unfortunately moved, but um, she was so shy and she basically would only talk to her mom and she was very shy around strangers. And, you know, over the course of a year that I worked with her, I was able to help her come out of her shell and, watching her compete and do facial expressions and really interpret the music as someone who's really shy. I was so proud of her and that was really inspiring to me. Cause I think that's what figure skating does. I think it helps bring out the best parts of you and helps, um, helps you become stronger in a lot of aspects mentally and physically. Yeah, it really does. Is there anything else? So, so you are getting ready now for the upcoming qualifying season. Right. When does that start? Or did it start last weekend? <laughs> yeah. So we are, we're already in this, the qualifying season and it's still just as nerve wracking as it is before. It doesn't get better in that aspect, but I'm really, um, I'm just so excited for it because I think this time I don't, it's not like my first games. Like it's not, I don't have anything to prove. So I'm just having a little bit more fun with it. Um, I'm just, you know, if it happened, I just, I don't want to have any regrets. I want to put all the training I can in. Um, and whatever happens, I'll be okay with. And, but I'm really excited for this upcoming season. It's good to be back. Out yeah. And, year. and then you said earlier on in this interview about how like representing uh, Latin America in figure skating. So like, do you consider yourself a mentor? You should. <laughs> oh, um, I, it's weird to think of yourself in that position, but yeah, I love to, um, I've been down to Brazil several times and worked with um, a lot of the Brazilian figure skaters in Sao Paulo, in Rio, and 
it's just been so fun watching how excited they are about figure skating and kind of sharing some of my the things that I've learned with them. And then another thing that we didn't mention, I didn't mention, I just remembered, you also did the Aurora Games, which was yeah. kind of fun and different, right? What was that, that like? Was, that was really cool. I thought it was really empowering having an event, like an athletic event for women. Um, and I thought it was cool because it was kind of like, kind of vintage in a way like it wasn't the new system people used like even though we never had a 10 point system they used like the score like the 10 point scoring cards and it was kind of fun being part of like a half show half competition if that makes sense like it wasn't totally yeah. a show because we were getting scored but it wasn't a real competition so it was it was really fun for me I really liked that event yeah, it was fun as a spectator as well. So, yeah, is there anything different. else? Yeah, <laughs> is there anything else um, that you'd like to add or or your summary for all of the Brazilians that have tuned in? I wanted to talk a little bit about um, kind of the progress Brazil has made in the past few years. We just got we just opened a like a federation just opened a brand new arena with a curling uh, ring with a rink for figure skaters and I am just so so excited to see more figure skaters come from Brazil and to see how far this program goes and I can't wait to be a part of it in the future whether it's going to be as um, a consultant or a coach or whatever that goes but I'm really excited for how figure skating is going to go for um, Brazil and also I want to shout out my friend um, Donovan who represents Mexico and he qualified for the first time ever um, a spot at the Olympics for Mexico in men's single skating. And I am so proud of him. Wow, Big that's awesome. Big things are coming for Latin America. Yeah. <laughs> Did I lose an earbud? <laughs> and, and because of your following as well, you have a pretty big following. And, you know, you share a lot of what Ice Brazil does. So I actually was aware of the big arena and, and I see like speed skaters now as well, which I hadn't noticed before. So you're really bringing yeah, a lot of have, uh, attention. We have a speed skater in Germany who's doing really well. So that's, that's really exciting. All right. Well, thank you and good luck with all of your upcoming training. And don't fall in a puddle at the rink. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try not to. And we look forward to seeing everything that you bring to the future. Thank you so much. E obrigada Thank you. por todos e seu apoio. Muito obrigada. Beijos com vocês. Okay. Thank you so much, Rosalia. And I'll see you around Thank soon. You. Yes, definitely. Bye. <laughs> Bye.